Welcome to the channel. I'm Gary Tommy. This is Straight Six Fan, your home for offbeat hot rodding. And well, it's time for another episode of Fairmont Files. That just means I'm driving the Fairmont somewhere. And um, honestly, what I'm trying to do is drive it well, at least once a week. Um, and this is actually the same day as I recorded the last two episodes, so I have no clue when this is going to go up. So it's Sunday, October 10th. Um, but uh, I, I was going to drive it to work once this week, but because I had the F-150 in the driveway, that was too much of a carousel to dance with, right? Moving three vehicles, or two vehicles to move the third one out of the garage. So anyway, here we are on a Sunday, and I'm gonna go visit fellow local automotive YouTuber, Rusty Wrenches. Well, I doubt that this is coming through on camera much, but we might run into a little bit of rain. It's getting pretty dark, cloudy enough on our way to Nick's house at Rusty Wrenches. And um, just real quick, a little bit about his channel. So his, his number one project car that he's kind of built the, the channel around is a 1972 Chevy C10. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're definitely gonna dig his content. So anyway, we're a little under half an hour apart from each other, so it shouldn't take us too long. But uh, when we get back on here, we should be in Nick's shop. Well, here we are live on location at Rusty Wrenches. Back here is Nick, and he's gonna show us his sweet 72 C10. So uh, I'm gonna flip this camera around and we're gonna do a full full walk around. My wife and I, uh, Daisy Confused, when that movie came out, uh, the truck in that, that's what caught my eye. The truck that's in that C10 that's in that, I, I had to have one. So as I got older and older and made a little bit of money, my wife, she grew up on a farm, so she really loved the trucks too. So we started searching, and we searched and searched and searched and searched. It was five years, and it turns out this truck was under our nose the whole time. It was a buddy of mine lived in Texas, and his a guy he worked with, his dad had one. And he was a big Mopar guy, and he was looking to buy a motor for one of his race cars. So I flew down there, uh, looked at it, ended up buying it. Um, and it was under my nose the whole time. That was, that was kind of the funny part about it. So um, he painted the truck. It's an original Texas truck. All original steel. It's, it's had uh, rockers and, and cab corners, but it's all original steel uh, that came with the truck, except for I think this and the bumper. Um, that all he did was paint it. So when I got it, I put a motor, drive line, suspension, brakes. I mean, literally everything is brand new, and it, it, so every nut has been touched, with the exception of the seat and. I also think that's it. It's tailgate? Funny. Yeah, tailgate, yeah. Okay. Tailgate, yeah. <laughs> Everything else has been touched, taken Looking apart, guess, rebuilt. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, yeah, because it's funny because the tailgate has been painted. I had to get this painted. When I had it shipped from Texas, the guy that um, brought it up here was pulling it off the trailer, and something in the trailer swung and hit this over here, uh. put a dent and a scratch in it, so I had to repaint all the white the week I got it home. Oh, man. Yeah, it's been fun, so I've always worn one. Um, I always wanted to do an LS, so this is my first uh, adventure into it. What size are we talking? So it's a 6 liter. It's originally okay. out of a, an 03 uh, Yukon Denali. Um, the bottom end is stock. Just, it's just good apart and put new rings and uh, bearings in it, but it's got Texas Speed heads and Texas Speed cam. Um, so it runs pretty good. Let's well, have that it gets a little bit. Yeah. It made about, uh, in second gear on the dyno, because we didn't want to kick the drive shaft, it made a little over 400 to a tire. Wow. So. <laughs> wow. Well, it looks good. I like I like that you kept the stock, like, the plastic cover. Like, there's something just, it looks, it just looks right at home. Yeah, and I was kind of on the fence about that, and I had it on Instagram, and I asked, you know, what do people think? And everybody kind of tended to go to the cover, so I put the cover on there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it kind of, Makes it cleaner because yeah. his truck intake manifolds are hideous. Yeah. Well, he did a good job too with all the, I mean, it helps conceal the wiring and everything. I mean, you don't, 
Yeah. I mean, you see my car with uh, vacuum lines galore, and then I could like, I don't know what you do. So much room for activities I know, here. Right? <laughs> right, the funny thing is, when I when I wired the truck when I built it, all the wiring's tucked on the motor. You can't see the wiring when you take these covers off because I originally wasn't going to run these covers. So all the wiring's tucked, so you don't see anything under there. And my in, my intent on the build was to make it look stock-ish. So the wiring kind of follows the stock route. And it's, I mean, it's all still here, but it kind of blends in and makes it look like it's kind of supposed to be here. Yeah. Um, the main LS harness runs down back on the backbone of the transmission into the cab, so it's kind of, it's all hidden. But uh, yeah, my, my intent was to make it clean-ish, make it look like it should be here. Well, suspension-wise, are you responsible for the drop on it, or is this how yeah. you bought it? Yep. Yeah. So I put, uh, it's got a RideTech Street Grip kit on it which they say is four, six. Um, I'm thinking it's a little lower than that. Yeah. It's, it rides really nice. It looks good. Yeah, you uh, you nailed the stance. I'm a sucker for like just barely seeing like the top of the tire and the bottom of yeah. the wheel well with. It's like... And I actually raised the back uh, three quarters of an inch from where it was. Uh, this truck has a bed lighter in it, which evidently is pretty heavy because when I put it on there It actually sat a little lower in the back than didn't really front, and I didn't like the look so I machined some uh, aluminum spacers beneath the springs to raise it up just a little bit Some four-wheel discs Yep. What rear end do you have in this so it's a stock 12 volt um, This truck was originally a leaf spring truck and I converted it to uh, pole springs and truck arms so I actually bought, just actually down the road here is a guy that uh, sells parts for these. So I bought a new end, a rear end that was from a 72 and rebuilt it. So it's got a 373 with a uh, um, posi in it. So you got your stickers in the... Oh yeah. Gotta always have them with you. I oh, don't. Excuse my mess. It's a... Oh. <laughs> you can look in my car. <laughs> it's, just, it's the same. A little hound's tooth is that a factory um or is so that it, just you it would have been factory that is not the original seat the original seat was just a black vinyl according to the uh the id tag but uh the guy that i bought it from put that in there and it had uh a white dash pad in it and he did the white um <laughs> oh visors. visors but the white dash pad was too much so i changed it out and i was gonna change the seat out but i really get a lot of positive feedback about it so that's the number one comment I get on yeah. my car. So I've just kind of left it. It's kind of, yeah. it's, it's hard to keep it clean, but it people like it. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't the two-tone, I would I would say it looks a little, I don't know, it, it almost looks a little foreign, but because of the two-tone, like, it yeah. it makes a lot of sense. You know, and fun fact about the two-tone, this is a Ford color. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cobra R. I, I think yeah. it was, yeah. Yep. He liked the color, so that's what he painted it. And this white is actually from his aluminum that he was driving. <laughs> How funny. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, okay. I'm I mean, okay. it looks GM, though. I mean, I'm, you're, yeah. I'm accustomed to that reddish-orange. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I kind of... It, it's really neat, because everybody comes up and asks about it, and I'm like, well, yeah, it's... <laughs> it's Ford a color. color. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, it's all some sort of PPG something, right? Like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not loyal to any brand, so... Well, very I mean, cool. I think I tend to go more Chevy just because that's what my, my dad grew up with and my wife's family they're all pretty much GM so I think that's usually how it starts right yeah. it's like I don't know whatever dad liked yeah that's... <laughs> I mean this is truth be told this is my first domestic car so <laughs> really yeah well, cool very cool so he always wanted a uh, this generation Nova he actually wanted a, a what they call a two-door post so there's a there's a, a, a B pillar and this doesn't actually have it but uh, he finally got an opportunity to buy one. And, uh, he wanted this color. And wow. Found it and bought it. And here it is. So, and it's uh, it's a true SS car. Uh, it originally came with a uh, six cylinder and a uh, power glide, which yes, SS back in the day still came with That's six cylinder. Weenie motors and, and weird. Uh, <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. Uh, but it's a uh, oh, 327 wow. on it now. It's stupid clean. <laughs> yeah. He didn't drive it much. <laughs> I mean it had a it had a full rotisserie. I don't know when the guy he bought it from did it. But it's got uh, QA1 coilovers and it's it's fun.
Yeah, the wheel-tire combo on this, too. You guys just know how to pick your wheel-tire combos, I guess. Yeah, and he's the one to go something smaller for ride quality. Because mm. he likes how mine, because I got those big fat tires on it. Yeah. The ride quality. So, but it's... It's a fun car. He wants to do something with some more power. He doesn't know what he wants to put. Because it's such an original car. He's kinda, yeah. He, he's, he doesn't really, I mean, he kind of wants to put the LS in it because they're so simple and they have so much power, but he's like... I think it would hurt the car because it's yeah. so original. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to. But. No, I'm, of all things, if you're going to change one thing out of the power plant, it's always, it's, that's okay. <laughs> all right, Nick, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for showing me your truck. Sorry I made you put it out in the rain, that's but right. uh, it's, it's a beauty and it's quite the... It's quite the machine, but uh, Rusty Wrench is on YouTube. Make sure you check him out. He's got uh, harass him about content because uh, he needs to get a go kart project going. I but did, uh, among a lot of things. But yeah, thank you for coming down. I do appreciate it. Thank you for the rain. Yeah, we haven't had rain for weeks, and here it is. Here it is. All right, well, take care, Nick. All right, thanks, sir. Yep. Always good to catch up with another local YouTuber. Probably should have left just a little bit earlier because the lights still like to flicker on Project Low Fairmont. And as you can see, it's pretty dark out already. Um, but I took as many back roads as possible and um, so didn't get pulled over. So that's the good thing. But uh, anyway, remember, go check out Rusty Wrenches. That's going to do it for this episode. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I don't care which one you do. As long as you do one, it really helps the channel out. To all my six fans out there, thanks for watching.